The Grow My Cleaning Company podcast helps owners of cleaning companies just like you to grow your company and yourself so you can make more money and finally get the time and money freedom that probably got you into this business. Discover how to automate and create systems that allow you to grow like crazy without losing control. If you dig the show and want to show some love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. It really helps. Enjoy the show. Hey, Cleaning Nation. Mike Campion here with Andres Aguera. Uh, and again, he's got a super Hispanic name that sounds cool. When he says it, it sounds not cool when I say it. So I'm just going to call him Andres, but there's some sort of Aguera name at the end that uh, he, can, he can correct me later. Uh, this guy started Eco Green Office Cleaning Services May 2008. And I think I met him, it feels like five years ago. Easy. So if you love Andres and want to do, does he have to, is there more? I want more. I think he did a podcast. He said he did a podcast with me years ago. It's a weird thing to lie about. So I'm going to take a, a flying <laughs> guess that he actually did. And maybe if uh, Lindsay's on it, she'll, uh, or the editor's on it, they'll uh, leave a link in the show notes. Anyway, started uh, Eco Green Cleaning, Office Cleaning Services May 2008. Chesapeake, Virginia. They serve commercial clients. Tell me what I missed, screwed up, or anything you want to add, my friend. No, that's good. All right. <laughs> so that's the first lie Andres has told. That was good. <laughs> we like it, okay. so we're going to let it slide. It's okay. <laughs> I already downgraded. He's like, it's good. It's okay. You're terrible. I'm like, oh, that, that, that's, that's off a cliff quick, man. It's um, your first time. Yeah, I've, I haven't done a podcast before, so thank you. Uh, <laughs> thanks for letting me, you know, be the new guy. Um, you know, what? usually I do a bunch of interesting stories, but your question's so good. I want to like leave as much time as that for that as possible. So talk to me, give me your big fat question. I'll do my best to help make your life better, my friend. Yeah. Well, in a nutshell, uh, we've had a couple of part-time supervisors to kind of get some load off my back mm. and uh, a couple of reasons, you know, things just didn't work out. Kind of my first time hiring someone for that position. So basically I'm just looking for the best way to lighten my load by taking a lot of that evening work off my back as far as training, supervising, managing the crews, things like that. And um, so um, just trying to find the most efficient way to pay and or utilize a manager, part-time supervisor, whatever title you want to give them. Uh, but they'd be working, you know, directly under me and, um, helping lighten that load. So um, just trying to find the best way to hire, pay someone to do a job like that. Okay. So because I know Andres, I'm going to just be super blunt and ask, ask for permission. Can I um, just give you the best coaching I've got, regardless of it may being what I think it would best be served by, as opposed to maybe even being what you want? Sure. Okay. So having done this for a little while and <laughs> coached, certainly has hundreds, probably thousands one-on-one -on -one, and then tens of thousands or millions with the podcast. Um, I found the caliber of value I can bring to another human when it comes to business is directly related to the caliber of the question or the, the, you ask good questions, you get effective answers. We ask different questions, we get different answers. So I'm not saying you don't have a good question. It's not effective. I'm saying, I think we can ask a better question and get you a better answer. So the key thing that you said that I immediately clung on to and said, yes, that's what I want to help you with is how do I get this load lifted? You said a couple like word pictures. I can see you go like, I'm stressed. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling heavy. I need to get other people doing it. I don't want to work in my business. I want to get on it. I want to, I want to get out of the weight of the day to day. Am I paraphrasing for you fair? Or am I completely hijacking what you're, what you're saying? Um, well, you know, I definitely want to focus more, more on sales and recruiting. Um, that's where my main focus wants to be. So just having someone able to manage the, the day-to-day crews and sweep software we have doing trainings, you know, things like that, that I don't have to do. I just need someone else to, to be able to do those things. Right. Operating the day-to-day -day as opposed to creating a new business. Yeah. Yeah. If I want to be able to take time off, you know, not have the, everything have to stop. <laughs> so, until I get back, you know. And so far, we are one thousand percent on. That is why we, as a team, do what we do is to help mm -hmm. exactly that. People get control over their business, control over their lives, create the freedom that they want. Not just financially, which is the obvious one, but time wise, right? I want to go mm -hmm. do what I want to do, and I want my business to continue operating with or without me. And when I am working on my business, I want to work on it. I want to create a new vision. I want or I want to execute my vision. I don't want to be doing day to day stuff that will need to be done day to day. <laughs> I want to be doing. Mm -hmm. On the business. Okay. So we're completely in line and super common for people to be unclear on even that step. So great job on coming with some clarity on what you want. Um, but oftentimes they make an assumptive 
next step, which is the wrong direction. So um, people don't want to work. So how do I pay more to get the right people? And I'd be like, that's not even the right question because it's not about the pay. It's about the core values. How do I create a culture? You know, I want this. So how do I that? Um, and I'm like, ah, I, I am always on the, I want this, right. It's your dream, your vision, your life. So I'm never going to be like, that's dumb. You should want a bigger business or work hard. Like whatever your life is, I don't get a vote. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, however, I can give you some feedback with a lot of experience on for that goal, maybe the, the weapon or steps or path that you've chosen is, might not be the best, best path. So and the fun part about this for me, Andres, is I've been exactly where you're at. I've had that conversation. Mm -hmm. I've gone the wrong way. And I'm like, ah, so I know the cost and the frustration. So yeah. I would disagree with the hypothesis baked into the question of the next step should be to hire a supervisor. And I'm not saying you should or shouldn't, but it isn't an A plus B equals C. One plus one equals two. I want more time. Therefore, I need to hire a supervisor. Um, always, regard whether it's getting out of cleaning, getting out of the office work, getting out of administration, getting out of whatever it is we want to get out of, whatever weight we want to get off of. Um, I have found first and foremost, when possible, create systems to remove. Well, that's not true. First and foremost, get clear on what we don't want to do. So when we say, I don't want to do day to day. And if obviously in the time that we have, we can't dive as deep as I would if we were one-on-one, -on -one, but or I shouldn't say one-on-one, one-on-one -on -one without a time constraint because uh, we are one-on-one -on -one effectively. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the podcast people won't listen to later. It's just you and I. So I would spend a lot more time on going exactly what it is that you want to get done. So when you say you gave one, we don't have to talk about all of them, but I give an example so you can kind of do this on your own time. I don't want to deal with the swept app. Okay. We're, and I, we love swept, but, and I shouldn't say deal with, but I don't want to handle. I don't want to be the guy that has to check in and make sure and blah, 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 blah. So I'd be like, great. Is that 10 minutes a day, 10 hours a week? Where are we at? And you kind of clarify that. So I would get a very clear list of here are the exact tasks I do not want to do. And here's how long I think each task will take um, or should take. And some of them we understand. Maybe Andres is great at it. So it only takes an hour a week. And maybe the new guy will take two hours. So we're going to probably put two hours down for that, not an hour, right? We're not looking mm -hmm. for, if everyone was perfect, we're looking for someone I can actually hire to do this job in a reasonable fashion. Now, if it takes you an hour a week, we're not going to put seven hours a week. That's insane. But we're not going to bust someone's chops if it takes them an hour 20 and takes you an hour. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but we're going to, we're going to bake some of that in. So first and foremost, and this is, it's so frustrating because I coach everyone to do this. And that's why I love working with people on longer term. We can make sure it happens. So my fear for many of you guys are, you're going to go, that's genius, Mike, and then do nothing. So you can do that, but the coaching will be with what you pay, worth what you paid, which is nothing. So I would really encourage you to do the hard work and not trying, because most people want to skip step one, right? Mm -hmm. A comprehensive list of these are the exact specific tasks I do not want to do. Here's how long it takes. Bonus would be to kind of put a job to, or a dollar amount by them hourly. So if it's like checking tasks and emailing people, that might be 50 bucks an hour. If it's uh, running my, doing a group interview, that might be 20 bucks an hour. If it's uh, building a funnel, a uh, hiring funnel, that might be 40 bucks an hour. So you kind of want to have an idea of like, you know, doing bookkeeping, that might be 20 bucks an hour. Filing my taxes, well, that might be 150 bucks an hour. Like you kind of want to get an idea of, because typically what people do is hire a $40,000 supervisor and $40,000 a year is 20 bucks an hour. And they give him $10 an hour task and $70 an hour task. But thanks, thanks because he's a supervisor. And I do the huge air quotes for those of you that can't see supervisor position, just be like, well, I'm paying him 40 grand. So he should be able to do everything. But that's an insane, that's an insane assumption that's not going to pay. So once we have that list, typically you'll find it breaks into two or three categories of skill sets. Um, any sort of accounting, I'm going to prepare the profit and loss statement. I'm going to deal with payroll. I'm going to have any sort of tax conversations. Um, I'm going to make a judgment based on where our cost of goods sold are versus our, you know, I'm going to try and increase profitability. These are all not supervisor things. These are accountant, bookkeeper, CPA, tax advisor things. The other one would be some sort of, I'm going to deal with the other humans. Um, in maybe a leadership role. That could be a client calls and they're pissed. That could be an employee calls and they're not coming in. That could be an employee punched another employee and we're going to sort that whole damn thing out. Um, that's a different set of skills, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that typically is like a $20 set, right? The third set is generally some sort of administration. I'm going to answer a phone. I'm going to create a spreadsheet. I'm going to fill in the spreadsheet. I'm going to prepare the payroll to give to the people that process the payroll, but I'm just going to tell them how many hours did what kind of all that administrative stuff that can be, you know, if you're going to the Philippines, four bucks an hour, two bucks an hour. If you're in the United States, that's, you know, 10, 15 bucks an hour, depending on what part of the States. 
Um, and then the last part would be some sort, well, I guess there's two more, but the last part typically is going to be uh, some sort of sales position, which could also be a person calls in pissed off. You want someone that's got a little bit more skill than just an admin person, or I'm going to sell something to a client or I'm going to build a relationship with the client. Um, the last one, which most people don't think of, certainly in this kind of quote unquote supervisor role is a, a really a higher level leader of men, someone at a higher level, but that's, that's not what we're talking about. So when we do that and we've got that list, I'm always going to go in order. First, I'm going to try and get a system to solve the whole daggum thing. So an example of that would be, I need someone to keep the supplies stocked um, or let's not even do that. I need, I need someone to do the scheduling for me. And right now we're doing it all by hand. Well, a system would be to have some sort of automated system where people sign up. It's on Calendly. It's there's reminders. Or that's it. I want to call people and remind them for their, their appointments. Um, that'd be more for residential than commercial, but you get the idea. Um, well, shoot, we can have a, an automated system do that and we don't have to do anything. And maybe a guy has to check out the system once, once a month, but for an hour, but th that's not an ongoing thing. So if, and when we can systematize it out, I want to systematize it out. Second, if I can't do that, I'm going to have a vendor do it. So example would be, I want someone to handle the supplies. I'm going to find a vendor and go, here's my locations, both the office for the places that don't have a, a janitor's closet. And here's all locations with janitor's closets. Um, you're going to be my exclusive provider. I'm not looking for the cheapest price. If you screw me, I'll go somewhere else. But if you're reasonable and maybe you're five or 10% or maybe 20% more expensive on certain things, and you're, as long as you're reasonable, I don't care if I, if you're if my, if it's a thousand bucks a month, typically if I nickel and dime together everything cheap and you're 1200 bucks a month, we got no problems. I'm, you're going to get hundred percent of my business as long as you treat me fair, but you're just going to go to all the, all the supplies, including my office. You're going to look at what we need and you're just going to make the order. I'm going to write the check. Um, a good vendor will go, wait a sec, I can just sell you whatever I think you need and you'll pay for it. And you go, yep, that's the deal. But you're going to come do all the work. Um, and of course, if you're dealing with someone of low integrity, that won't work. They'll screw you. But if, if you're dealing with a low integrity mm -hmm. person, the problem is that your system is going to vendor that's not yeah. a lying cheat, right? So different, different problem. So that'd be a perfect example of I'm not going to hire somebody. I'm not going to put that on a supervisor's task list. I'm going to have a vendor do that. Uh, same with rags. Oh, what do we do with the rags? We're going to have somebody pay a freaking company for God's sakes, or at least know what a company would charge and have that as an option. So first I'm going to have a system solve it. If I can't have a system solve it, I'm going to have a company solve it. A vendor is what we call those. Mm -hmm. uh, Third, if I can't get, uh, if a vendor's not willing or able to do it, or it doesn't make any sense, then I'm going to have a contractor do it, right? So say our podcasts, um, we have a contractor do that. Like I don't, I don't have a team member, an employee, like I could do a vendor, but it was kind of expensive and we do enough podcasts. I'm like, I'll just have a vendor that he works for other people. This is not his full-time job, but he's not working for another company that charges me a margin because that works, right? If there's constant turnover mm -hmm. in that position, I would probably just pay a company that would handle all that turnover nonsense and I'd pay more money. So that's kind of the difference between a vendor and a contractor, but he's not an employee. He's not a part of our you know, team as it were. Mm -hmm. um, finally, if I can't do that, I'm going to have, um, and almost always you can do that. You'd be shocked how much you can get done. Scheduling, just scheduling. That's it. That's a, that's a contractor, man. We want a quote unquote supervisor to do that. It's literally one dude that works zero to one hour a day that just deals with all that. That guy didn't call in. So I got to call that guy or everything worked fine. So I didn't do anything. That can just be one dude that you pay 200 bucks a month and it's done. We want to have a supervisor do 17 different things, which sucks because again, they're typically three or four different skill sets and he has one or two or she has one or two. When he or she quits, you're screwed because now you got to replace all of that. And it's a son of a gun. And you have to get him back up to speed. But when you have it diced out into, well, the system handles this, a vendor handles that, we've got a VA that handles that. Um, the next thing mm -hmm. would be adding it to a current employee, like rags. If you weren't going to have um, a contract, if you couldn't systematize rags, I don't know how you systematize that. They're dirty. You got to make it, they got to be clean. You can't pay mm -hmm. a vendor and no contractor will do that work. I would just tell an employee, hey guys, we have the rags. Whoever wants to handle the rags every month, you get 200 bucks or whatever a fair fee is. You handle the rags and we'll have three. Uh, the first guy gets his shot. If he screws up, it goes the second and the third. But see how we, we're kind of combining a system with an employee, but it's not a new rag guy that we're hiring. Um, mm -hmm. And then the last thing I would do, which typically you don't need a quote unquote supervisor, well over a half a million, sometimes you can squeeze to a million. Even then, I still don't want a supervisor, which could mean anything. I still want very specific, we call it thin slicing jobs. So you're doing this specific job and you're really good at it. So when you quit, so much easier to get a new podcast guy, vendor for our supplies, um, person to answer the phones. Uh, I'm trying to think of all the things that we've discussed, um, person to handle scheduling. When one of those guys quits to replace that little dude, super easy.
And typically you've other people cross-trained on that job. But when you got one guy that does, and the person that does it is really good and do podcast side editing, by the way, like those are different skills. So when you have one guy doing it all, he or she usually does a garbage job at a third of it, an okay job at a third of it, really good at a third of it. Like, and then when he quits, the thirds may switch and you have to now, now seven processes in your program are broken. And then who's back working it? It's Andres. Um, and we wasted forty thousand dollars. If we thin slice it, it usually costs a lot more than that, or a lot less than that. Sorry, so you save money. So the big thing is, short answer to your or long answer to your short question. I'll get your feedback. Is don't jump to supervisor. Typically, what that is is somebody, and not please, no disrespect to you, Andres, is a very common thing. It just I haven't done the the hard work of thinking through what I'm really looking for, and really matching a customized situation to each of the problems I'm trying to solve. I don't want to do that work, which might take two or three hours. And it's, it's a, it's a son of a gun to think, right? Like that's why we get paid. It's hard work. Um, but once we think and put that through and put the, the systems in place, that's working on your business because you might be able to break that one $40,000 a year supervisor position into three or four systems, vendors, contractors, team members, side jobs. It costs $20,000 a year. And you're like, oh, I saved 20 grand. Big deal. You get the right person doing the right job. My podcast editor is really good at editing podcasts. How would he be an answer in the phone? Probably terrible. I don't know. I've never asked him. But if he quits, it's super easy to get the new guy. I'm not editing freaking podcasts. We just have somebody else do that. Um, whereas a forty thousand dollars supervisor quits, Andres is out there, you know, doing whatever that guy does and hating life. All right, long rant for a short question. Com- questions, comments, rude remarks. What, what can I do for my friend? Yeah, no. Um, I guess I've I've done some of what you're you're saying, uh, but not to the extent. So yeah, for example, we have uh, our supplies and inventory. You know, um, I do have one of my cleaners uh, who wanted some extra hours. And so I signed that to him and he's doing great. But that used to be the task of my previous supervisor. So I was giving him a whole slew of stuff to do from training to, you know, uh, cleaning inspections. And for, so, so what I'm getting from you is really have my cleaning inspector, right? That's his own job to inspect. Maybe have someone who's a, f- or a handful of people who are floaters and their job is just to fill in and clean for other people. Um, have someone manage the software, uh, the scheduling, stuff like that. Just kind of break up the tasks mm-hmm. versus having a one, one person do it all. Yeah, um, one point of failure. We've got several points of failure. Yeah. Much smaller and when, failures as opposed to and when my supervisor quit, then I, now all that was thrown back on me. Right. <laughs> so that's why I started to divvy off the supplies and inventory to someone else. So, so I just need to continue <laughs> with that process based on what you're saying. Yeah. Your and, supervisor quit. You acknowledge your problem. You started yeah. down the right path of sol- solving. And then you're like, I'll just go back to the other thing that created this problem in the first place, which is very typical. I would just be like, wait, no, yeah. I was on the right path in the first place. I don't have to second guess myself. I'll just, I just didn't, maybe you didn't know how deep or how, Far, you you did you thought hey I could make this big problem a small problem by taking off little chunks of the supervisor thing. Hopefully now you're like maybe I could solve this entire problem, and I promise you I can um, with that same thought process. Yeah, I guess my my concern is then well, is someone going to want to work thirty minutes a night managing software? You know, <laughs> is that a good enough job to hire them for? You know. Um, that's why I was kind of grouping, Hey, you can do the inspections for a couple hours and you can train someone for an hour or two. And that way they have a shift that's worth their time. Um, so, but now if we in. chop it up, okay. Let me jump in Cause a lot of people make that same thought process and I don't want to just hover over it. Cause a lot of people are going, I feel the same thing, same way. So yeah. we'll answer not just you, but, but the, the audience, we make a, one of the hardest, not hard. It's so fun. I like to talk to people that have been out of cleaning for a while so I can show it to you in that regard. And you're like, well, obviously mm-hmm. that's a thing. And then you're like, oh, I'm doing the same thing at a different level. So we mm-hmm. do the same thing when we start. You're like, I don't have 40 hours of cleaning to give somebody and no one's going to want to work 10 or 15 hours. And hopefully you're like, all my people work 10 or 15 hours. <laughs> yeah. So we kind of make this judgment around what we're typically saying is I couldn't live on 40 hours a week. Therefore, nobody shall, right? Same thing with residential cleaners. A lot of times they're when they start, they don't have as much money as their clients. And they're like, I would never pay $300 a month for someone to clean my house. But you're not selling to you. You're selling to your client who would pay $300, right? Like I would never pay $10,000 for a golden toilet, but they exist, right? <laughs> Somebody's <laughs> selling it to somebody. Right? I, I don't even know. Maybe they're 100000 I sound ignorant. I have no idea what a golden toilet would cost, but I wouldn't pay a nickel for it because it would be gauche for me. But that doesn't mean there aren't 
probably several people, if not dozens, if not hundreds of people making millions of dollars selling golden toilets that I think are ridiculous. So when it comes to the reverse of, I would never work for 200 bucks a month, that's fine. You're not hiring you. I wouldn't do it either. So if I tried to hire you for that job, I'd fail. And you tried to hire me, you'd fail. <laughs> but there are humans all over the world um, that would do that. And there's a couple of reasons why. One, they might have 10 of you or 20 of you. And now they're like, I make $4,000 a month and I only work an hour. You know what I'm saying? It's all of a sudden not that bad. There also might be people in the Philippines who are like, you know, 200 bucks a, a month is quite a bit of money for me. Um, there might be a mom that's like, I just want to challenge and I want to do, there's, there's a thousand reasons why people would do it. So as leaders, do your best. And it's really hard not to put our junk on other people, um, which is a, a common mistake. Um, yeah. Anyway. Uh, last thing I wanted to give you, and then I'll let you kind of finish this out, is you mentioned something. I was like, no, 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 don't do that. God bless it. I can't remember what it was. All right. Continue what you're saying. I'm going to let you finish this out, my friend. Uh, yeah, no, I think you, you hit that on the head, just splitting it up with different people and based on their skill sets versus trying to find, force someone into a mold that they can't do at all. Um, so that, that makes um, good sense to me. So. Yeah, I appreciate that. Cool. And again, another added kind of unintended benefit is to train someone on, I, I hate this big, broad supervisor thing that could mean anything, it could take weeks and maybe they're not a fit. And you, it's, so you're like, oh my mm -hmm. God, I'm out of, I've been doing this position for a month. I'm miserable. I hire a guy that maybe isn't the best guy, but I just want out. And then he really needs two or three weeks of training, but I'm so freaking miserable. That's like, I gave him two days of training. And I, I, when he gets overwhelmed, I'm confused as to why he quit. So there's all this like baked in grossness that doesn't work. Yeah. But guess what? And I love you podcast editor. If you're listening, you know, who's literally listening to this. Um, <laughs> if it, when he quits, I'd be sad, but it's pretty easy to find another dude do that because it's just one single skill, right? Same thing with do my, you know, and, and to train is just like, oh, it only might take a guy and for the podcast, I should come knowing that, but for your scheduler, right? Say that was a piece of his duties. To train just on that might take a couple hours and you probably have a couple, and if you're smart, you made some videos of the training the first guy, you just let the second guy do it. So, but when I've got 17 different tasks I'm training, it just takes a long time because he's not good at those things. But my, I know my podcast editor is going to be good at podcast editing because that's all the frick he does, right? And if I hire a VA for a scheduler, I'm, I'm assuming they do virtual assistant type tasks on par with that kind of complexity for lots of different people and lots of different tasks if they can't get it to the wrong guy. So not only... Do you get the better guy for the job? Typically save more money for the job, have no stress when the turnover comes because it's easier to hire an editor or a scheduler or an ex than it is a quote unquote supervisor supposed to do these nine different things. Um, on top of everything else, the transition is super easy because if you're like, hey, welder, I need a welder. Super easy to find a welder. But you're like, well, welder, I also need to clean the bathrooms, balance my checkbook and you know pick up my dry cleaning. That guy's hard to find, but each of those tasks is easy. So there's just there's a lot of baked into that. All right. Um, Questions, comments, true remarks, or do you think we covered everything we need to cover, my friend? Uh, yeah. Do you do you think because it's software related that maybe have a VA managed swept every night? I'd have to get probably, but I'd have to get into the specifics. I don't know what managed swept looks like for you, right? That would be different. So mm -hmm. I'd have to kind of break that down. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't. I would have no problem with one guy doing just that, or again, two or three small tasks like. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you manage SWEP and you do that are related, right? Like my accountant, when you're large, you have a payables clerk and a receivables clerk, and then you have someone above that and you have a CFO. But guess what? When you're doing under a million, there's one guy <laughs> or gal that's the payables clerk and the receivables clerk. I mean, there's your email. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on managing SWEP for a team of 500. That might be all he does. Managing team uh, SWEP for a team of 31, he might be able to do that and the scheduling. So it kind of yeah. depends on what that looks like in your, and you might use sweat for everything they do, which is a ton. And you might use sweat for just one or two things, which is different. So we'd mm -hmm. have to get into that, but that would be generally from what you said, that is that 10 to $20 an hour thing, you know, for you, maybe it's three hours a week for someone else. Maybe it's 20 for someone else, 20 minutes. We'd kind of have to see, but I would want it to be a complimentary thing, like do, managing the payables and receivables, complimentary doing sales mm -hmm. calls and managing receivables, not complimentary. Yeah. So a VA dealing with customer complaints, that's they're different, right? He, this mm -hmm. is a spreadsheet guy. He's getting data. He's doing so as long. Yes. I would put on other tasks, but make them sensible connections, right? Like sales mm -hmm. guys shouldn't be cleaning. Cleaners shouldn't be doing accounting. Accounting people shouldn't be doing hiring. Like they're all fine jobs, yeah. but the, the accounting people could do things within that skill set. So that's why I said at the beginning, we start with the list and then you'll start seeing a bunch into categories of like, okay, this is all kind of one category that a type of human yeah. would be good at, as opposed to if we don't have the list, 
It's just the supervisor that we're hoping is quote unquote smart. All right. We are way over on time because I won't shut up. Um, <laughs> Andre Zagara, everybody. Again, I'll try and get the show notes link with the other podcasts if you just can't get enough mm-hmm. of Andre's. If you're like, I like this, I want more. We've done about 700 podcasts. We've got a uh, free Facebook group with 15,000 people. Um, you can even text me. I just started that. I haven't mentioned my text number in a while. Where is it? I will uh, get it to you. I think it's actually in the outro. And Lindsay men- gets mad at me when I yell it and when I say it. But I'm going to say it anyway. 602-932-6431. <laughs> Shoot me a text. Say, hey, I don't do a bunch of coaching over there. But it's just good to check in and see where you're at. See if I can help you. Um, GrowingCleaningCompany.com. Check it out now. I will see you there. Well, here we are, the end of the podcast, and you made it. Great job. Uh, I've got a little bonus for you before for sticking through with me, but like I mentioned before, if you got value out of this podcast and you want to show a little love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Spotify, wherever the heck you're listening to this thing, share with a friend, share the love. And as a special thank you for those of you that stuck with me to the end, how about I give you my personal phone number so we can text? It's a great way for me to get to know you, your business, your goals personally. So shoot me a text now, 602-932-6431. 602-932-6431. I am the only one who responds to these texts and I will personally respond to everyone I possibly can as long as uh, this number is manned. I uh, don't know how long we're going to keep this at the end of the podcast, so grab it now. 602-932-6431. Give me a text. Say hey. Can't wait to meet you.